Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending what time of day you're actually viewing this. Hey, this is John Reed coming at you with some good news, some encouraging news. And I just want to kind of take some time out just to build you up and encourage you and uh, share share some uh, good news with you. How about that? Would that be great? I think so. Uh, so on this, uh, I, I, just a little bit about me again, in case you don't know, you never may have seen this. I'm a person of grace. I'm a Christian uh you know, saved by grace through faith because God's a good God and Jesus is a wonderful Savior and a loving Savior. And I just want to share some encouragement with you today, if that's all right. Um, and I kind of want to give you uh, some information that might actually help you, uh, what I believe it will actually help you reign in life, be a victor in life and not a victim in life, be an overcomer and not simply being overcome with the, you know, the obstacles and the troubles in this life, if you will. So with that, I just want to encourage you with this statement that, uh, well, with this, let me give it a kind of a title, if you will. How about this? I want to share with you real quickly, real briefly on the vitalness, the, the importance of not just feeding on God's word, but continually feeding on the word of God, on the gospel of grace and in the word of faith. Now, what I mean by feeding is what are we giving ourselves attention to? Just like we feed our bodies these three meals a day, if you will, we are, you know, especially those who are watching our, our weight, you know, watching what we eat, you know, healthy eating. We, we watch what we put inside our body. But notice how we feed our body. Your body needs food. You cannot last forever without food uh, and water. Food and water, you will, your body will shut down uh, and even die. So just like your body, you know, God made us as a, a, tri a tripart being. We have a body. We are a spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. First Thessalonians 5.23 talks about that. And we feed our mind, you know, we actually feed our mind, you know, knowledge. When you're, you know, when you go to school, when you go to college or you go to trade school, you're what? You're feeding your, 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 your mind knowledge. You're giving it soul food, if you will, real soul food, if you will. But our spirit, we sometimes neglect our spirit. We need to feed our spirit too. And sometimes we get so busy in this life and we or we just believe this, this lie that we don't have enough time or that's not really that important. And I want to show you that it is very important, even more important than regular food and water and mind, you know, stuff, knowledge, feeding your mind. It's more important, first and foremost, to feed your spirit. Now, obviously, you do need to eat to live. But what I'm saying is, um, is it's something that is vitally important in your walk with God. In your, if you want to grow spiritually, think about it. Uh, now, let me just share two scriptures with you. Uh, Romans ten eight and nine says, "But what's what does it say? The word is near you, and in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach." That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, let me read another scripture from Colossians. It says, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you have already heard in the word of the truth, in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has, co has come to you as it has in all the world and brings forth fruit as it has also in you since the day you heard of it since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. So we see here the gospel of grace and the word of faith. These are vital truths in the scriptures. And I believe as new covenant believers in Jesus Christ, two vital, two of the most vital truths we must know and understand are faith and grace. These are the two primary factors in living victoriously in this world. We'll never grow up into maturity, walk successfully and overcome if we lack understanding these two vital truths. You know, you might say, well, you're just overstating that a bit, aren't you? Not at all. I'm only agreeing with Paul and agreeing with John, the apostles. See, Romans 5.17 says, whereby the offense of one, death reigned through the one. Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through one Jesus Christ. You want to reign in life? You need to receive abundance of grace and receive of the gift of righteousness. You take advantage of that gift of righteousness. Because then in and, First and John 5, 4, it says, Because everyone who is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victorious power that has conquered the world, our faith. So we see reigning in life, being a conqueror, comes through grace, comes through faith. That's the importance. See, God is for us, and he's never against us. 
And this, the Bible, though, he's the word of God, the Bible is a love letter from heaven to us. It is not a rule book. It is a, it is a, it is a faith food. It is a grace food. It is a great diet to help us overcome in this life. See, God is so, he's always for us. He wants to give us, and he wants us, God is so good. He wants us to walk in blessings even more than we want to walk in blessings. He wants to give us everything that we have need of in this life to be an overcomer. Why? Because he loves us. Simply put, he loves us. What is the gospel of grace? The gospel of grace is the good news of God's grace pledged through Jesus and his complete work of redemption. It is God Almighty himself stooping down to become one of us, living among us and laying upon himself the sins and iniquities of us all. He bore it all at the cross. In his redemptive work, Jesus became something he never was. He was separated. He became separated from God in order to take upon himself all our sins, all our shortcomings, all our failures, and redeem us from them. He exchanged, he bore and exchanged our sin, our poverty, our lack, our sickness, our disease, our want, our spiritual death, and he took it upon himself. And he exchanged it with his abundance, his forgiveness, his healing, his wholeness, and none of this is because we earned or merited it. It's all because of Jesus' goodness and love. See, there's nothing we could do to even to merit those things. If only the, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ could accomplish that and purchase it, what do you think we could do to earn it or achieve it? Or even, you know, even now, there's nothing we can do but what? Simply trust and believe in God. Now, what is the word of faith I keep speaking of? The word of faith, this is a heart. That is fully persuaded. That's what faith means to be fully persuaded. It is a heart that is fully persuaded that, and that what God has accomplished through, that what God is fully persuaded, it's a heart that is fully persuaded in what God has accomplished through Christ, in and through Christ, in and through Christ, and what his word declared confirming that work. Especially that, you know, that work of redemption. And it is the truth. It is the truth. You, 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 your heart is fully persuaded that this is the truth. That's the word of faith. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God says is the final authority. Faith agrees with God no matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it seems like, no matter what it appears like, what somebody says, faith agrees with God alone. We could say faith is having a good opinion of God. Faith is being fully persuaded that he is a good father and he keeps his word. And what, he's, what Jesus has accomplished on the cross and the resurrection worked. Now, why do we need to keep feeding on these two principles, grace and faith? Why do we need to keep hearing and hearing messages and reading books and, and blog posts and things that are speaking of grace and faith? What's the, what's the big deal, if you will? What's the big deal? Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world that the enemy runs amok in and there is still uh, rampant brokenness in this world and we need uh, to overcome every attack of the enemy, every effect of the fall. That's why we walk by faith in this life. And we have, you know, and we also have hope because we know there's a greater life to come, even, you know, in heaven, as far as greater, meaning we're going to be with Jesus. Um, but, at the same time, you know, and, 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 and hear me out too, like the enemy is not taking a vacation. This fallen world does not cease because we just get tired. We just feel like not, not listening to the word. It's still there. We need to constantly, continually feed on what God said about us and agree with it. Now, uh, but we're not going to, now, we're not going to successfully overcome these things if we don't know what belongs to us if we don't know what he's done for us. Uh, now, in this age of technology, we have more than enough availability to get and receive what the word of God says, the word of faith, the gospel of grace. We have more than enough. Now, see, you may say, well, I don't have enough time to do all this stuff. Well, we all have 24 hours in the day. And it's how we, do, how we uh, spend that time, how we use that time. And I'll tell you, you know, there, you, we get ready in the morning, we shower, we get dressed, we, 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 uh, we do some daily exercise routines maybe, we, we walk, we, sometimes we come home, we, when we come home, we, we, we fix dinner, we cook, we, uh, we clean the kitchen afterwards. Uh, so there are times in those, I mean, if it's, I'm not speaking of three hours a day, 
10 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes at a time. While you're cooking supper, you can pop, pop an MP3 in or a you know, CD, whatever, that's teaching you the gospel of grace or the, or the word of faith. You could uh, turn on a YouTube video as you walk, do a walk around the block. You know, that's great exercise, walking and listening to the word being taught. Um, there th you know, in the, in the morning when you're in, sh in the shower, you know, you could, you, as, you're, as you're showering, you know, you could agree with God with your words. Like, hey, this, I am an overcomer. I am the righteous God of Christ. I am the blessed. I am the healed. I am the whole. As you're showering. So you're agreeing with God. See, there's more time than you realize, especially in our commute to work. We can, instead of getting angry at traffic, we could be listening to the word of faith being taught or the, or the gospel of grace being taught. And we could overcome. We could feed our faith and I mean, feed our heart, our spirit, man, good food. And the more we do that, we will grow and grow and grow and walk in greater victory and greater victory. Paul talks about going from faith to faith and glory to glory, not from defeat to defeat and, and, and sadness and more sadness. It's great. It's great to feed on the word of God in Jesus' name. So I just want to share that with you and encourage you. God loves you. God's for you. God's not against you. And take the time. Be It's an encouragement. Get in the word. Keep feeding on the word. And I tell you, you are going to see a change in your life. You're going to see a change in the way you think. You're going to see a change in the way you talk. And eventually you're going to see the way you're going to see a change in the way you act in this world. And I'm telling you, it's going to be it's a refreshing. It's encouraging. And listen, it's not a work and a performance to feed on God's word. That's fellowship with your father. That's love. That's a relationship. That's not works and performance. I just want to encourage you, bless you. And if you get time, you know, hey, if you want to read a blog, I have a blog post called www.allthetimegod.com. I have some several articles on grace and faith and healing and uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, supernatural power of God, gifts of the Spirit for today. Uh, just things that will encourage you about who God is and how much of God is a good God and how God loves you. Remember, God's not holding anything against you. God's for you, not against you. Have a great day. God loves you. And Jesus is Lord. And you are his, if you've trusted in him, you're his child and nothing can change that. Have a great day.